four. Oh, four. Oh. Hello guys, welcome. My name is Jamie. I'm an English language teacher from the southeast of England, and I worked with the owner of this channel in uh, Kobe, Japan, on a CELTA course to learn how to teach English to adults. Today, I'm going to be reacting and reading the Tokyo University English language uh, entrance exams, and we're going to see if uh, a native English-speaking teacher can answer these questions himself. So let's just jump right in. Question number 22. The old-fashioned stereotype that women are not suited by nature at a mathematical study suffered a major blow in 2014 when Marianne Merzikani became the first woman to receive the Fields Medal, math's most prestigious award. An equally important blow was struck by an Italian mathematician, Maria Gaetana Agnesi, I don't speak Italian, born 300 years ago. Agnesi was the first woman to write a mathematics textbook and to be appointed to a university chair in math. Yet her life was marked by paradox. Though brilliant, rich, and famous, she eventually chose a life of poverty and service to the poor. So if somebody was to say that paragraph to me, I would completely understand it. There is no glaring errors. There's no obvious errors there. But I think the error that they are looking for is in question A. Not suited by nature at mathematical study. It's very small. But I would say not suited by nature for mathematical study. Um, I think that's the only real problem with this paragraph. I might be wrong, but that's the only thing I can see. And that's so small, I don't really think it matters at all. Question number 23. Born May 16th, 1718 in Milan, Agnesi was the eldest of her wealthy father's 21 children. As she grew up, her talents shone, particularly in the study of languages. In part to give her the best education possible, her father invited leading intellectuals of the day to the family's home. When Agnesi was nine, she repeated from memory a Latin speech, likely composed by one of her tutors, in front of her father's guests. This speech condemned the widespread prejudice against educating women in the arts and sciences, which had either been grounded in the view that a life of managing a household would require no such learning. Agnesi presented a clear and convincing argument that women should be free to pursue any kind of knowledge available to men. Okay, the error here is a bit more obvious than the one in question number 22. It says, which had either been grounded in the view that the life of blah, 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 blah. either. What does the word either mean? Well, it means that there are two options. So it says, either been grounded in the view that a life of managing a household would require us no such learning. And if it was, if you needed to use the word either, you would have or at the end of that, and then you would say something else. So for example, which had either been grounded in the view that a life of managing a household would require no such learning, or that women were regarded as less intellectual at that time, 300 years ago. Um, that's the error in, in that question there. However, again, it, it doesn't prevent me from understanding you, at the very least. Okay, question number 24. Agnesi eventually became tired of displaying her intellectual abilities in public and expressed a desire to retire from the world and to dedicate her to a religious life. When her father's second wife died, however, she assumed responsibility for the household and the education of her many younger brothers and sisters. Through this role, she recognised the need for a comprehensive mathematics textbook to introduce Italian students to basic methods that summarised recent mathematical discoveries. Okay. So the error here is, once again, very small. And I wouldn't, if I was marking somebody who wrote this essay, I wouldn't even bother mentioning it. Um, the error is in C. Dedicate her to a religious life. 
The correct pronoun to use here wouldn't be her, it would be herself. Uh, to dedicate herself to a religious life. So small, so small a mistake though. Okay. Number 25. Agnesi found a special appeal in mathematics. Most knowledge acquired from experience, she believed, is prone to error and open to dispute. From mathematics, however, come truths that are wholly certain. Published in two volumes in 1748, Agnesi's work was titled The Basic Principles of Analysis. It was composed not in Latin, and was the custom for great mathematicians such as Newton and Euler. I'm, I'm not a mathematician, I don't know who that is. But in Italian, to make it more access accessible to students. Agnesi's textbook was praised in 1749 by the French Academy. It took much skill and good judgment to reduce almost uniform methods to discoveries scattered among the works of many mathematicians from very, sorry, very different from each other. I can't read my own language apparently. Um, I'm going to have to read this again to get the um, error. This. Agnesi found a special appeal in mathematics. Most knowledge acquired from experience, she believed, is prone to error and open to dispute. From mathematics, however, come truths that are wholly certain. That's correct. Published in two volumes in 1748, Agnesi's work was titled The Basic Principles of Analysis. It was composed not in Latin, as was the custom for great mathematicians such as Newton and Euler, but in Italian, to make it more accessible to students. That's fine. Agnesi's textbook was praised in 1749 by the French Academy. It took much skill and good judgment to reduce almost uniform methods to discoveries scattered among the works of many mathematicians who very, are uh, very different from each other. Uniform methods to discoveries? Four discoveries? Okay. Alright. On my second read through, I think I found the error. I think. And I think it's an E. It took much skill and good judgment to reduce almost uniform methods to discoveries. I think it's meant to be. It took much skill and good judgment to reduce almost uniform methods of discoveries scattered among the works of many mathematicians very different from each other. Reduce almost uniform methods for? Of? For? Of. Reduce almost uniform methods of discoveries. Okay. It's of. <laughs> it took much skill of judgment to reduce almost uniform methods of discoveries scattered among the works. I think it's meant to be of. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that one though, so... Hopefully... I'm correct. It's very embarrassing if I'm not. Number 26. A passionate advocate for the education of women and the poor, Agnesi believed that the natural sciences and math should play an important role in the educational curriculum. As a person of deep religious faith, however, she also believed that scientific and mathematical studies must be viewed in the larger context of God's plan for creation. When her father died in 1752, she was free to answer a religious calling and devote the rest of her life to her other great passion, service to the poor. Although few remember Agnesi today, her pioneering role in the history of mathematics serves as an inspiring story of triumph over gender stereotypes. She helped to clear a path for women in math for generations to follow. Agnesi excelled at math, but she also loved it, perceiving in its mastery of an opportunity to serve both her fellow human beings and a higher order. Okay, I think the answer to this one is E. Agnesi excelled at math, but she also loved it, perceiving its mastery of an opportunity to serve both her fellow human beings and a higher order. You can't perceive in something, but you can perceive something. So I think it should be perceiving its mastery of an opportunity to serve both. Okay. Thank you very much for watching this week, guys. Uh, next week, we'll, we, we will be back looking at the entrance exams for Nagoya University. Um, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next week. Bye.
Make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Take care.